Hi there nieces and nephews, this is Travels Going to Jenny and we are here at Winter Park, Florida about to take the scenic boat tour. Come join me. Yes, both my Auntie Dee and I decided to take the scenic boat tour here in Winter Park, Florida. On a boat with knowledgeable tour guides, they'll lead you through canals and three different lakes around the area that teaches you the rich history of Winter Park. So if you have the time and you're still interested, continue watching this video. All right, so we got two adult tickets and all together we paid $32. Yes, it was a very last minute decision and we actually took the last tour of the day, which is 4 p.m. And here is our tour guide, Don. No, I can catch him. Here we go. Here we go. We're finally on the boat getting ready to head out. So sit back, relax, tour, and enjoy everybody. the show, everybody. Who's been on the boat before? Looks like we might have some frequent floaters all over here. <laughs> Welcome back. You sure all your probation periods are up? <laughs> <laughs> no, we want everybody to be a frequent floater at the scenic boat tour. My name's Don. I'll take you on this little one-hour adventure. Three lakes, two canals. Now we're on Lake Osceola right now, the smallest of the three lakes. Which We're going from Osceola mm -hmm. to Virginia, and we're going to finish on Lake Maitland. Mizell arrived here from Virginia. He bought 13 acres over on the next lake, set up a sawmill, and started harvesting the wood from the area. The canals that we go through today, as pretty as they are, they were created to move that wood from one lake to the other. The winter park blossomed quite quickly after that 1881 start date. In fact, on the right-hand side over there on that shore, on that shoreline, stood the grandest hotel in the state of Florida. In 1886, it was built. It was called the Old Seminole Hotel. 250 rooms, four stories tall, observation tower on the top. In fact, the observation tower could see Lake Osceola as well as Virginia from both sides. I'll give you an idea of how grand it was. The front veranda, the front porch, was two football fields long. 600 feet. 1886 to 1902, they had a kitchen fire in 1902 and it burned to the ground. Oh, wow. Underinsured, they had to sell off the real estate to cover their losses, but that's where it was until 1902. Hold on to your hats, glasses and hats if you have them. <laughs> Make our way to the first canal the fern canal and it's brief it's an eighth of a mile long but there's a very low bridge and it's particularly low right now because of the water level so when we get to that point i'm going to emphasize that you have to get down almost to the ground in order to get through but on the way to the fern i want to point out the home on the right the historical home built in 1885 it's called the capen house i'm going to spell it for you c-a-p-e-n i'm spelling it for you because there's a youtube video on that home it was built in 1885 on this lake, but it wasn't built there. It was built on the other side and moved to that location. But how they moved is what I want you to know. They cut it in half. They rolled it down the hill and they floated that home across Lake Osceola. And it wasn't that long ago, 2010. There's actually drone video coverage of that home being floated to that spot. And at the end of the tour, I'll show you where it was originally built. Okay. Everybody's patiently waiting for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, they just went in, I think. Well, we're going to go for it. The water is very high. If you've been on the tour before, you know these are borders, and right now we're over the top of them. And normally there's somewhere between 8 to 10 inches of those above that we still have, and right now, as you can see, it's exceeding it. Well, actually, last one, Friday night, we got five inches of rain. Um, but it is a residual from the hurricane. There's a lot of water still being moved around from the hurricane, and there's no real capacity for it to go. This all flows out to the Lake Howell and eventually to the St. John's. 
The canals are normally about four to five feet deep. All of our lakes are spring fed, but the springs aren't sufficient to maintain our level. We need the rain that we've received in order to keep the canals full. Our biggest issue is drought. If we don't get the rain late July, August, these canals can get very, very shallow. Now here comes the bridge and you definitely have to duck. And I'm gonna make sure you do. Otherwise you won't get under it. <laughs> Oh my god. Good job, everybody. Wow. <laughs> now this is the Fern Canal and straight ahead you'll see that oak tree and there's a branch that's extending across the canal. You'll see a fern that's growing on it. Normally that fern is brown and dormant, but since it's recently rained, you're seeing it bright green. The name of that fern is called Resurrection Fern. And if it's a couple days with no rain, it'll go back to its dormant state. But as soon as it rains, it'll go back to the green, earning the name Resurrection. Okay, we're heading out onto Lake Virginia, home of Rollins College. 250 acres, about 15 feet deep. When I was over here earlier, Rollins was having a sailing regatta. It's a nice day to be out sailing. Welcome to Lake Virginia. <laughs> now, if you look to the right, I love the view of the Rollins campus on the right. And of course, the Knowles Chapel being the center of the, chapel, of the campus. Built in 1932, Mr. Knowles was responsible for bringing the railroad from Orlando to Winter Park. And when he did, he brought the railroad right to campus, actually put a platform on campus for the students. It ran from 1889 to 1960. His daughters had that chapel built in 1932 in honor of their father and the contributions that he made to Winter Park. From a faith perspective, it's considered to be interdenominational. They have a Pentecostal service on Saturday and a Catholic service on Sunday. This Lake Virginia after his home state. On your left, you'll see a bridge with water underneath it. That's Lake Mizell. He named that one after his last name and this one after his home state. But all the homes on your left, they're lakefront on both sides. Lake Myself's on that side, Lake Virginia's on this side. So you know what that means. In the morning, a cup of coffee and a sunrise <laughs> on Myself. And in the afternoon, maybe it's a different glass or beverage and a sunset over here on Lake Virginia. Now the home on your left originally started in 1926 and it was the Men's Club of Winter Park. In 1956, that became Rollins Music Conservatory. In 1976, it was sold, and that's been a private home since 1976. And here's a secret about that house. Nobody's grass is that green. That's all artificial turf. <laughs> all these homes on your left are lakefront, both sides. There's one road that goes right down the middle of that property. It's called Genius Drive. It's about 200 acres in total from the bridge to the very end. the largest property owner in Winter Park was a gentleman and a family by the last name of Morse, Charles Morse. You might recognize that from the Morse Museum. Mm -hmm. The Morse Museum is the largest collection of Tiffany stained glass in the world. Closed on Monday, Tuesday through Sunday, if you get a chance to visit. Well, by 1906, he was the number one property owner. Like a good father, he called, just called his daughter and son-in-law. They lived in Chicago. His name was Dr. Genius. And he married his daughter, Elizabeth Morse, genius. They purchased the property on your left in 1921 for $200 an acre. The very first home built was the home on your left. That's the home of Dr. Genius and his wife, Elizabeth Morse, genius. And they still own about 80 acres on the left. That's called the Morse Genius Preserve. There is a growing population out there. Does anybody know what population is increasing? Three times, exactly. It's a city bird. Now, when I was in high school, that's where we used to drive on Friday nights, down that road, looking for the peacocks. So, so, so much. Now, we're going to make our way to Rollins. 
What a beautiful campus, 80 acres, takes the entire shoreline. In 2015, Princeton Review rated Rollins College the number one most beautiful campus in the nation. Always in the top 10, but in 2015, number one. was the first private college in Florida in 1885. In their first year, they had 65 students and the tuition was $125 per year. It's gone up. Last year, I'm told they had 2,700 undergrad, 1,000 graduate students, and the tuition now at Rollins were afford $74,560 a year. Highly regarded as a large college, nine students to every one teacher. And it is a private college, but it's a public campus, and it might cost $75,000 to enroll, but it doesn't cost that to visit. There's a sidewalk that runs right along the shoreline there, right behind the boathouse there. That's called the Elfon Boathouse. That's for their sailing and their power sports. They have a crew facility over on Lake Maitland that I'll point it out to you when get there. But the sidewalk, you can see somebody walking. It's about a mile and a half long, and it'll take you right to the campus. And it ends right by the swimming pool in the Rollins cafeteria. Invited to visit Rollins while you're here in Winter Park. In the cafeteria, that's my other little secret. It's open to the public. There's a restaurant called the Boathouse on property that's excellent. But the cafeteria is pretty good too. I promise you, for $75,000 a year, they don't come up short on their food service at Rollins. Now to the left, you'll see the building with the tile roof. That's the Rollins Museum of Fine Art. It was the Cornell Museum of Fine Art. It changed about a year ago. Over 5,000 permanently displayed fine art pieces in that museum. But what I like about the Rollins is every 90 days they have traveling exhibitions that go through there. So if you're local to Winter Park, you can visit that and see something different usually every time. Tuesday through Sunday, that is the Rollins Museum of Fine Art. Well, we're going to go back into the fern. Just a courtesy reminder of the low bridge. I'll remind you again when we get there. Yeah. Sometimes people wonder if the property on the right is Airbnb or something like that. No, not the case. No short-term rentals in Winter Park. No Airbnb, no RBO. It's <laughs> not permitted. There's the only alligator I can promise. He doesn't bite. I usually get a question or two about alligators, and there are alligators on all these lakes, but they're very rarely seen. I work a couple days a week. I fish almost every other day. I don't see them very often. Duck, 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 duck. <laughs> tree coming into your view, covered in Spanish moss, also covered in that same resurrection fern. But I'm told that's the oldest and largest oak tree in Winter Park and dated at greater than 250 years old. And that tree's a great example of why these canals were originally dug out in order to move wood like that over to the sawmill. And you can see just how big that tree is. So oak pine right there's a southern pine almost as big at the top as it is at the bottom and cypress was the other type of wood that was being harvested if you're not familiar with cypress as we exit the canal on the right hand side you'll get a good view of cypress trees but it's not just the cypress tree that's not protected it's the root system they're called cypress knees and there's a really nice colony of it right here on the right hand side and when it shows up on your shoreline there's nothing you can do those are cypress trees, and that's the root system for those trees. And all that is protected from removal. You're good. Oh good. How you doing? Last one. That's it. Alrighty. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you look to the right-hand side, 
you'll see a very cute pair of boat houses over there, two of them. They're white, quaint, and cute, and they belong to Mr. and Mrs. Brewer. They were from Cortland, New York, and he was a very successful carriage builder. He was in Winter Park in the 1880s buying lumber, and he fell in love with the weather down here, and he fell in love with Winter Park. He bought the property you're about to see, went back to Cortland, and asked his wife if she'd make the move to Winter Park. He had some health issues that he thought would improve upon here, but they still had five small children at home. They had recently built a new estate home up there, six bedroom, seven bath observation tower. He knew she wasn't gonna be excited about it. So when she asked, she said she'd move, but she wanted to wait a couple years to enjoy her home. Mr. Brewer looked at her and he said, honey, I understand. And I thought you might say that. And that's why I built the same home for you in Winter Park, oh, Florida. Wow. The home on your right is an exact copy of Mrs. Brewer's home in Cortland, New York. Wow. Six bedroom, seven bath. That's the front door because in 1898, this would be the front of the house. Observation tower on top. They lived there till 1940. That is the Brewer estate. White roof. That home was built by Winter Park's most famous architect. His name is James Gamble Rogers. He's built many homes in Winter Park and many of them on these lakes. I'll point out several more as we go on the tour. But the home on the right was one of the last homes he ever built. That was built in 1958. He built that for the Rich family. That is their name. And they had a long list of items, but number one was a view of the lake from every window and a white sandy beach. Well, I promise you that beach was much sandier a couple weeks ago. The hurricane currently took a toll on that. But the sand was originally brought in from Daytona, six truckloads, in order to create that beach in 1958. The design he named Bermuda Colonial. That was one of the last homes built by James Gamble Rogers. Now the home on the other side, we're gonna go around the corner. That home was built in 1958. The home on the other side, almost new, seven years old, all glass house. We call it the Windex House. <laughs> You'll see it in just a moment. Well, we're going to make our way across the lake over here to our next canal. But before we do, I'll point out to that corner over on the right. Part of Lake Osceola, but we refer to that corner as Osceola, it's Alligator Cove. We don't really have a big alligator issue, but in the late 70s, residents in that cove were concerned with the activity. Fish and Wildlife verified that over 200 alligators were in that cove during mating season. They trapped 125 to 150 of them across the next eight weeks. They moved them up to Seminole County to a place called Lake Jessup. Don't go swimming in that lake. Mm -hmm. But that's Alligator Cove. We still don't see very many on the lakes. I talked to the Fish and Wildlife officers and they estimate somewhere around 100 in total on all six lakes. And if they become aggressive or territorial, they'll they'll act on that pretty quickly. But like I showed you Dinky Beach every Saturday, about 25 swimmers take off on that beach and they swim across the lake. And so far they've all come back every Saturday. I think the alligators in the lakes thing just sort of depends where you grew up. I grew up, my first job, I used to fish golf balls out of all the lakes around here. But I have a wife who's from New York who won't even get in the water, so <laughs> I understand. But we got to talk about the home on the right, off to the right. First, I got to check if anybody's home on the boat here. <laughs> I was hoping to meet them. Uh, it'll be done later this year. Currently, when it's done, it'll be by far the largest home on the lake. It's one of the largest homes in the United States currently under construction. 4,000 square feet in total, approximately. I'm sure that the In the middle there, that's one solid piece of glass. I thought it was an AMC movie theater when I first saw it. I'm hoping to be invited to the Christmas party. Even if I have to work it, I'll be happy to go. I can only imagine what that shoreline's going to look like when they finish that house up. It's been under construction for over two years.
now as we go into the Venetian Canal. We call it the Venice of America. Three quarters of a mile long as it meanders through some of Winter Park's finest backyards. Now the home on the right, that's another James Gamble Rogers home. Meticulously landscaped. Home on the left is under a major renovation. It'll be done sometime in the next year, I'm told. But the homeowners on the right, they work very hard on their landscape. She's got an orchid garden that I'll point out to you as we go through that didn't do very well in the hurricane, but I know she'll have it back. This is the Venetian Canal. And believe it or not, these are two-way canals as well. Not too much traffic during the week, but on the weekends, pretty busy. You can see the orchid presentation that she had up in the trees here. last one. There might be one more. Just, I don't know if they sent one out after me. What's behind me? Now as we go through the canal, the boathouses that you see on the right hand side, they actually belong to the homes on the other side of the street over there. There's a narrow road on the right that's called Alabama Drive between us and those homes. Christmas lights on Alabama are spectacular during the holiday season. I know you, a lot of you all are local. You may have, has anybody been on the uh, holiday Christmas light tour? No? I know they're booking them now for the holiday season. Well, straight ahead is Lake Maitland, by far the largest lake that we'll visit. 500 acres, 30 feet deep in many spots. In fact, half of it's in the city of Winter Park, and the other half is in the city of Maitland. Wow. 
Now on the right hand side, this is part of Rollins College. It's the only part of Rollins on this lake. It's called the Bradley Boathouse and this is their rowing facilities for both their men and their women. And maybe their sunbathing facility. Now you'll see the cypress trees out in the water. On the other side of the cypress trees is Maitland. On this side is the city of Winter Park. And we're going to go down the shoreline here. That's an 11 acre public park and it's called Craft Azalea Gardens. It's located off Alabama Drive and it was donated to the city of Winter Park in the mid 1930s by the Kraft family. popular for weddings and photography. It's called an Excedra, which stands for six column monument. It's about a half a dozen benches on the right hand side of here. Located on the Alabama Island. That is Craft Azalea Park. Alabama Hotel. Built in 1922. A lot of famous authors and dignitaries stayed there. The most famous would be Margaret Mitchell. She wrote the last two chapters of Gone with the Wind in 1935 while she was staying at the Alabama Hotel. In 1979, it was sold and converted into a 20-room luxury condominium. But that was the Alabama, 1922 to 1979. Now the homes in front of us, these are Winter Park's oldest, most established. Straight ahead is called Villa Tuscany. That was built in 1927. And in the very center of the home, what you're looking at is that's a waterfall that originates inside, comes all the way down and collects in the swimming pool at the very bottom. Villa Tuscany, 1927. Boat that pulled in and out on a very unique rail system all-glass house, master bedroom at the end. You gotta make your bed every day if you live in that house. We call that the no secrets house. I wonder if they know that we do night tours. similar even the window accents are similar and the houses are intended to look similar but the house on the end on the big one on the end was built in 1926 the home next to it was built in 2015 why the similarities well the homeowners on the left wanted to add to their home and they specifically wanted to add a swimming pool beautiful property but no property left for a swimming pool the house next door became available they bought it they had their architect design that home so it would be period similar to the 1926 home, although built only six years ago. The home on the right is their guest house, pool house, and the home on the left is the main house. Now, if you'll look to the right, you'll see the bridge. Same water we're on now, Lake Maitland. In fact, if I went around the corner, I could quickly get to the other side of that bridge. But that makes the property on the right pretty special. It's an island, and it's man-made by the city of Winter Park. 1926, they decided they wanted to create a feature that no other city had. It was all swampland. They put sandbags around that swamp, and they started to backfill it. When they were done, they had an 11-acre island in the middle of Lake Maitland. They divided it into 11 home sites, and they named it the Isle of Sicily. 11 acres, 11 homes. That's the Isle of Sicily, and that's the most valuable real estate in Winter Park.
cypress tree on your right is a special tree to the tour. We had a driver named Charlie. He drove for 15 years. He decorated that tree with his kids and grandkids. Well, he passed away about seven years ago, and we continued to honor that tradition. In fact, next November, we'll take out his grandchildren. And other residents have started hanging up ornaments in recognition of lost loved ones. We call that the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Rest in peace, Charlie West. Now you remember Hurricane Ian a couple weeks ago. If you take a good look at this boathouse right here on your left, you can see where the high water line was. Right there at the very end. So all, I mean the water was all, this was all underwater. You can see that's why it looks like that. But that was about two feet. Again, all this you can tell was all washed out. <laughs> well, 
now at the beginning of the tour, I mentioned to you about the Capen House, C-A-P-E-N. That's the one they floated across Lake Osceola. Mm -hmm. The home on the right that you'll see with the white chimney mm -hmm. is the best way for me to mark it. White chimney, white trim, gray color. That's where the Capen House was originally built in 1885. So if you do have a chance to visit that YouTube video, you'll see them from that location floated from where on the right over to where it now sits over on the left. Two pieces. Again, 45 minutes for the first piece, 15 minutes for the second piece, and a year to put it back together. Now, after they floated it, they built their dream home that you see with the big white chimney. But as we go by, you might have to block the sun a little bit, but you'll see below the big house, you'll see a smaller home. It's like a miniature version of the big house. They built that after the fact that even it's detached, it has a chimney on the right-hand side, and they built that for their grandchildren. It's a 1-1, and they call that a tiny house. But we're all from the area. We know how special Winter Park is and all the neat things that can be done in this area. So we're grateful and thankful when our guests visit us. On behalf of the Scenic Boat Tour, myself, Don, your skipper, thanks for coming today. It's certainly been a beautiful day. Enjoy your stay in Winter Park. Be careful. Hopefully you got a dinner reservation somewhere. It gets really crowded up there quick. But thanks for coming. I hope you had a good time. Please come back and visit us again as well. Thanks again, folks. Thank you. How did you like My the pleasure. scenic Thank boat you. tour here in Winter Park? Pretty cool, huh? Didn't realize how much history well, was involved well with Winter Park <laughs> since it was established around 1881. Thank you for watching. I hope my video was helpful enough for you to get an inside look on what to expect when doing the scenic boat tour here in Winter Park. And if you really enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my Instagram and Facebook page. And as always, thank you for watching. This is Travels Mind to Jenny. Bon voyage.